This lesson is about distance. And we're talking about distance in the coordinate plane. So we're going to be seeing how long a segment in the coordinate plane is. So you probably notice that we're using graph paper again. So if you need to get some graph paper, feel free to pause it, go get some and come back. Um, remember if I mentioned before, there's a website called printfreegraphpaper.com and you can go to that website, pick all different kinds of graph paper and print whatever you want. So here is my X and Y axis. This will be X, this will be Y. I'm going to put a couple of points on here just like the video we did yesterday. I'm going to put the point 1, 1. So right here this will be point A. And point A is going to be the point 1, 1. I'm going to put another point, point B, and it's going to be 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right here is point B, 4, 5. And then I'm going to connect it, connect the dots, so that I have a nice line segment. There we go. Now what I want you to do, in just a second I'm going to tell you to pause it, just like most of the videos. I want you to pause and think in just a second. I want you to try to figure out any way you can come up with to determine how long line segment AB is. The goal of this entire lesson is to determine what is the length of AB. That's our goal. So go ahead and pause it and see if you can come up with, think about things that you've done in the past, think about things that you may have learned last year, you may have even learned it in junior high, but just pause it and see if you can figure out how long this is. Okay, so you've thought about it for a minute and maybe you have an answer, maybe you have an idea of how to do it, and maybe you have no idea how to do it. Either way, we're going to go through it together. So line segment AB here. I don't know how long it is. It's not laying nice and neat like this, right? It's not, it's not along the straight line here where I can see easy how long it is. It's also not going vertically where I can see how long it is. But if you notice, as I'm doing this, what am I trying, what am I turning line segment AB into? Hopefully you see that there's a right triangle here. It may not have been drawn, but it was here the whole time. And on this right triangle, I know that the base of it is three units. I know that the height of it is four units. And if I have a right triangle that I know two sides of, what can I do to find the third? Hopefully you are recalling something called the Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully that's not the first time you've ever heard that before. The Pythagorean theorem, as I'm sure you are aware, states that in any right triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that's pretty easy. Most of you have probably got this mastered. So we're going to use it to find out how long this blue segment, segment AB, is. So A in my right triangle is 3. So 3 squared plus b is 4, 4 squared equals c squared. And then I just work this out like you probably already know how to do. So 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared, which is 16, equals c squared. 9 plus 16 is 25. And then the last step, and this is the one a lot of people forget, the last thing we want to do here, when we have c squared and it's equal to 25, how do we get rid of that squared and make it just say c equals something? Well, if this is squared, the opposite operation or the inverse operation, I guess you would say, of a squaring something is to square root. So if I do a square root on both sides, my equation is still balanced. The square root 
of c squared is just c. The square root of 25 is, I'm going to do this over here on the side, the square root of 25 is positive or negative 5, right? Because negative 5 times negative 5 equals 25. But if I put a negative 5 here, we've already talked about this, could distance be negative? And the answer is no. So we don't ever worry about the negative part of a square root. In geometry, we're almost always going to use just the positive. So for now, we're just going to use the positive c equals 5. And that's pretty simple, right? Now I want you to not do this right now, but you can go ahead and write it down. You're going to do it later. So this is just an example of why the Pythagorean theorem is not always going to do it for us. So I'm going to write this down. A problem you might get could say find c d. And that means find the distance from c to d, find out how long c d is. So I'm going to put a point here, c, negative 7, comma 5. Here's d, 11, comma, negative 9. Now, if you look back up at my graph, I don't have room to put that kind of stuff, right? That's too big. Okay, so there's another way that you can solve to find the distance or the length of something. And we're going to do it right now. I'm going to put up a little divider here between my Pythagorean theorem and something called the distance formula. So here is the distance formula, which you should, at this point, have already made a vocabulary flashcard for, so it shouldn't be the first time you've heard this either. Now, instead of just telling you the formula, I want to let you think about it just a little bit. So, here's our segment AB. The way we found the distance a few minutes ago was to create this right triangle and use the two sides in the Pythagorean Theorem. So I want to talk about where these numbers came from. Let's talk about where the 3 came from. Where did this 3 come from? And I know that there's three spaces here. But just like the midpoint yesterday, let's pretend there's not a picture. Let's pretend all you have is your x1 and y1, and up here you have your x2 and your y2. Using just those just those coordinates, where did this 3 come from? So take a minute and think about it. Okay, hopefully you thought about it and you came up with the fact that 4 minus 1 is 3. Well, it's also true that 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And remember we talked about distances will always work out to be positive based on the formulas we use. So we're going to start writing this formula down. And the first thing we need to do is find the difference between x1 and x2. Okay. Now once we find that difference, that's this number right here. Right? That's 3 doesn't matter three if it's this way one two three or if I go this way one two three I'm gonna have it positive no matter what we do so it's okay that one minus four is negative three that's gonna fix itself in just a second now let's go over here and find that three that same three right here after we came up with three what's the first thing we did to it right here you'll see we squared it right so I say we could just square it now right then what do we do? We added it to the 4 squared. Well, where did the 4 come from? Where did this 4 right here come from? It came from 5 minus 1, right? Or 1 minus 5, either way. So I'm going to add y1 minus y2. I'm going to add the difference between the y's and that's also going to get squared. Okay, so now let's look at what else happened in the Pythagorean theorem. We did 3 squared is 9. That's that's nothing special. That's just kind of like rewriting it. It was 3 squared, now it's 9. Big deal. 
Okay, 9 plus 16 is 25. That's another one of those kind of big deal. You know, we just rewrote it. The only other big thing we did that actually made anything happen is we did the square root of whatever all this added up to. And we did it at the very end. So once we do this and we do this, we need to square root all of it. And once we square root it, the only thing left is the distance. And this is the distance formula that you're supposed to learn and you're going to need to memorize it. So let's write down real quick. I'll do a little example with it using the points we just did. The distance from A to B is equal to the square root of 1 minus 4 squared plus 1 minus 5 squared. Okay, now I'm just going to keep on simplifying everything under this radical. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Still squared. Plus 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Also still squared. Now if you're following your Pythagorean theorem over there, I have 3 and 4. And here I have that 3 and that same 4. Now, before when we had distances, we would use absolute values to make them positive. But we're not going to have to do that here because what happens when you do negative 3 squared? What is negative 3 times negative 3? Well, it's positive 9 because negative times negative is positive. So, negative 4 squared is 16. The square root of 25, 9 plus 16 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So, our distance equals 5. Now, you're probably looking at this, like most people do, and looking at that and saying, oh, wait a minute, Mr. Lewis, that one took more steps. Well, it took one more step if you match them up. There's one, two, three, four, and this one has one extra step, which as you get better at it, you'll be able to combine a couple of these into one step. And we come up with the same exact answer. So go ahead and try it with this one. Bring it into class tomorrow. We'll talk about the answer and we'll go over it when we get there. But you'll see with this one, if you tried to graph this, it would take you longer to make your graph and make your right triangle and count your little squares like this than it would to just plug these numbers, x1, y1, x2, y2, into the distance formula and just chug out the answer real quick. So work this out and bring your questions tomorrow.